Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Nebraska's motto was once, Nebraska, it's not for everyone. Technically, that is true. I'm sure a lot of the people who live here would say it's not for everyone. Like, stay away if you have shitty political ideas, shitty dispositions, and just a shitty attitude. It was day five of my Heartland adventure, and for the first time ever, I was arriving into Omaha. I'd be here for two whole days, which I thought might seem like forever. But as I discovered, there's a whole lot of Omaha to like. I might just say, it's maybe my next favorite city. Omaha is where the people come from all the plains. It has good things, not just corn and beans. No wonder it's the new Midwest best place. Omaha's a fairly big city. They've been flirting with half a million people here for a while now. It's growing really fast, even though it's way out in the middle of nowhere right on the Iowa border. I had begun my trip way down here in Kansas City, and I spent a couple days there. Along the way, I stopped in a bunch of small towns. There's hardly any people in most of this state. So why are people coming to Omaha? I mean, Nebraska might not seem like a very interesting place, and many of you don't even know exactly where it is on a map. But this state has a lot going for it. It ranks as one of the best states in the country to live in when you measure things like schools, quality of life, affordability, and safety. For the most part, you can safely go just about anywhere in Nebraska, day or night. So a lot of people are coming here for cheap living and for safety. Young people are moving here to start their families, and families are coming here for good jobs. A lot of tech companies have moved here. Omaha has a new nickname, the Silicon Prairie. The bad parts of town aren't that bad, and there's a lot of land for the burbs to grow, and there's a surprising amount of things to do. You can divide Omaha up into five distinct areas. The north side, which is black, the south side, which is Hispanic, and the west side, which is white. On the other side of the river is Council Bluffs, Iowa, which is having a really bad time right now. And then there's downtown. Half of downtown Omaha is mostly just office buildings, and it's really not that exciting at all for anything but serious stuff. I filmed this on a Saturday, though, so keep that in mind. But it was super dead. On the previous day in Kansas, we had a much-needed rain. But in Omaha, it was really hot. I think it was 101 degrees this day, and there was a constant wind that made you feel like you were standing in front of a damn hair dryer. Not fun. Omaha's really improved in the last 10 years. There's some really good hospitals here, and it was already home to a bunch of Fortune 500 companies, but there's been somewhat of a tech boom here. It's much cheaper for companies to operate here, and Omaha's workforce actually works. <laughs> There's even big tech companies from San Francisco that have moved into town. I mean, you can't blame companies for wanting their employees to be able to actually afford a home where they work. If you can't find a good job in Omaha, you ain't trying. Words out, and lots of younger people are coming here because of Omaha's newfound attention. A lot of the newcomers are streaming in from other Midwestern cities. People who previously would have never considered Omaha, let alone Nebraska. But once they're here, they're like, damn, son. Word on the street is that many of the younger people that came here plan on staying, too. And all the money and influence has allowed this city to grow and prosper. Small towns that were once on the fringes of downtown have been annexed into Omaha. They're gentrifying areas that were formerly decaying. There isn't a homeless problem here. They're adding much taller buildings, condos, apartments, hotels, schools, and even a light rail to meet all the demand. There's construction everywhere here. So, Omaha's in a very good place right now. A nice apartment downtown can be had for as little as $1,200 a month. And that's a nice apartment. I know, right? But the cost of living is going up all the time. It can't be perfect here forever, right? For fun, yeah, this place is definitely separated from the rest of the country. There's no mountain or an ocean or another big city for a long, long ways. So you can get kind of trapped here. I mean, Des Moines isn't really worth driving to, is it? Right now we're in the old market part of downtown, which a lot of people say is the best part of downtown. 
It's the city's arts and entertainment district where you can shop and eat and drink and even stay. It's very nice and clean and new and safe. It's really charming. I might even say it's one of the best new downtown districts I've been to in a long time. I know people, I was surprised too. And look at this park. I think this park might be the coolest part of the city. It had just opened up a week before I got there. There's an amphitheater, a bunch of grass, all kinds of things for the kids to play on. There's water and little seating areas. It's really clean. And you know what? Not one a-hole or bum in the whole place. They even have park ambassadors that come around and pick up trash all the time. I wonder how long that'll last. These people are lucky to have this park in the heart of their city. And I could tell people realized how blessed they are to have it. Hopefully, it doesn't get ruined. Did you know there are 17,000 animals in the Omaha Zoo? I didn't, but it looks like you took one home with you. Nebraska doesn't have a lot of crime, Mappy, so you might want to take him back to the zoo. He's a her. Are you sure about that? Outside of downtown are a couple other neighborhoods of note. This is the Benson area, about five minutes west of downtown. It's another one of Omaha's newish entertainment districts. It's a much funkier alternative to downtown. And this is Exarban, another one of Omaha's hip, cool places to live. It too is very nice. Lots of newish, downtownish, cheapish places for folks to live in. It's a neat place. You can live a block from here and probably pay about 320k for a house. Not bad at all. But it's not all shits and giggles. Omaha's a great place, but there's issues here just like anywhere else in the country. Supposedly, Omaha's the most segregated city in the country. There could be many reasons for that. Some people in town say the city was intentionally redlined, which means minorities were intentionally separated from the white people. But look at how it's divided here. Just wow. We're going to start up in North Omaha. This is by far the most dangerous part of Nebraska, and the reason Omaha is ranked a little bit above average nationally for crime. Most of the time, when there's a gunshot in town, it's coming from up here in North O. This is part of town where the gang and drug use is heavy. Up here, you'd have a 1 in 25 chance of being victimized. Most people are poor. The poverty rate is close to 1 in 5 people. And if there's one place in the state where you'll be shot for being in the wrong place, it's probably here. Some nonprofit actually reported that Omaha has the highest percentage of people who use drugs of any other major city. I don't know if that's true or not, but what the what the damn hell? Who would have thought? North Omaha was also rated in the top five for most gangs per capita in the country, up there with Detroit and LA. Well, that's no longer the case, but wow, again. A lot of people up here call this Omaha's ghetto, but things aren't nearly as bad here now as they were 20 years ago. So, good for you, Omaha. And let's be honest, this is nothing compared to the bad parts of Chicago. Let's be real about that. This part of town might be rough, but it's not bad for a Midwest city. I think you can see that in the area I'm in now. Here's an interesting part of North Omaha. This is totally random. I was driving around right in the middle of the worst pocket of town when I came across a neighborhood that doesn't have paved roads. Just for no real reason. Well, I'm sure there's a reason, but the reason wasn't evident. It looks like Kentucky or West Virginia right here. And this is just three miles from downtown. Some of the roads were actually a route on Google Maps. <laughs> that looks like a mountain road nowhere near Nebraska. Omaha's a liberal city, but it's liberal light. I mean, you can't be too liberal in a state that's almost all conservative. Look at that boating map. Just two little blue dots in a sea of red. It's pockets here on the north end that are the reason Omaha votes liberal. And it's the south side, too. Now, the south side also gets a bad rap. It also has a higher share of crime, but it's not nearly as bad as the north end. It's mostly Hispanics on this side of town, so you know the food's good. I mean, look at all the Mexican restaurants. Overall, South O is old and poor, but it's not that bad. Homes here sell for about 200k, like they do on the North End. The growth of Hispanics in the middle of the country is a big thing people are talking about. It used to be, Hispanics stayed near the border when they entered the country. But lately, Hispanics are coming up into the Midwest in big numbers to work in the fields, and in the slaughterhouses, and in the factories. 
They'll do much harder work for lower pay, and they don't complain, and they don't want to form unions. Over the last decade, there's been a 28% increase in the number of Hispanics living in the Midwest. They currently make up about 8% of the Midwest population. Their presence is controversial among longtime Midwesterners, but in reality, they're actually keeping smaller towns all over the region from shrinking even further. We'll have to see if this impacts future elections or not. Hispanics are voting more and more conservatively in case you haven't been paying attention. Most of the white-collar, college-educated crowd lives either in West Omaha or in Sarpy County to the south. A lot of West Omaha is pushing even more west, so a lot of the neighborhoods here have houses that all kind of look the same, kind of like how they do it in California. Homes out this way are closer to four and five hundred thousand dollars. This is also where you'd find million-dollar homes and lots of businesses. Just about everyone out this way is white. Many people who move here say it's a great place to retire. It's certainly a really hot housing market out this way, and it's nowhere as cheap as it once was. I'd heard that smaller towns in Nebraska were suffering because so many people were leaving them to move here. And Omahaians are seeing the dark side of too much growth. They're starting to complain about affordability. Who would ever think that people in Omaha would ever complain about high home prices? But it's happening. There's also a problem with the lack of teachers. They had a big teacher shortfall not too long ago. Teachers need higher wages to keep up with the rising cost of living in Omaha. And with all the new families moving in, the problem's getting worse. Here's what I think you hoped you'd see. This is the neighborhood where Warren Buffett lives. You know, pretty much the richest person in the world. And that's his house, right there, behind that little fence. It's not that fancy, is it? It's worth about $300,000, which is probably less than your home is worth. Warren just lives a simple, humble life, I'll tell you, like many other people in Nebraska. Hard work and no fluff. For those who want to live further out, Sarpy County has become a really nice place to live these days. Cities like Bellevue, Papillion, and Gretna, they're exploding with growth. You can get a decent house in a place like this for 250 k people. I'm serious. It's about 10 miles into downtown, so it takes about 20 minutes to get to work. For now... They're putting in a bunch of new businesses down here in Sarpy County. Homes and schools are going in as fast as they can make them. The population down here in suburb land has gone up 28% in the last decade, and it's now the fastest growing region in the Midwest. It's such a focus here that the county just changed its county motto from whatever it was to grow Sarpy. There's really fancy, kind of fancy, and plain nice suburbs all over South Omaha. We're currently in Bellevue. It's not bad. A nice upper middle class region. It's not as upscale as I thought it would be, but it's totally safe and clean and nice. Homes here average about 280 k and that is not bad at all, people. There's just so much room down here. You could buy a place that's on the edge of corn, but it's likely one day that corn will be gone. All the growth here has put the Omaha metro area over a million people for the first time ever. People here take pride in hosting the College World Series every year. They brag about having one of the best zoos in the country. They brag about this being Warren Buffett's hometown. But they don't want to brag too much, because words out among people who might not share this city's views. And a lot of the long-timers here say they don't want to bring in too many more outsiders. For now, as Omaha continues to grow, Nebraska has a pretty bright future. It somehow managed to be conservative, progressive, modern, and wonderful all at the same time. There are too many liberal places that can say they're doing well. You know what? It might be my second most favorite liberal city in America after Boston. Sure, it's behind the times a little bit, but that's a good thing. I think the time I visited Omaha, it was at its peak. It was like a flower that's opening up just at the right time. Usually what happens is the city gets too big and problems follow, traffic, crime, homelessness, expensive, depression. I really hope that Omaha doesn't change for the worse. Because right now, I think it's the best place I've been to in a long time. Yeah, I mean it. And I didn't think I'd say that before I saw it. While out and about in Omaha, I did a lot. I mean, I was here for two whole damn days. 
One night I drove all the way down to watch the Omaha Storm Chasers play the Iowa Cubs in a triple-A baseball game. And I say, all the way, because the Storm Chasers used to play in a neat baseball stadium downtown. They shared it with the NCAA, which hosts the College World Series every year. But the NCAA paid to make the stadium much better and said the Storm Chasers had to hit the bricks. So they stuck their new stadium practically in Kansas. I like the Storm Chaser Stadium. They're the minor league affiliate for the Royals. They wound up getting their butts kicked this night. I think the Cubs had like nine home runs or something. It's growing so fast in Nebraska, they have billboards up throughout the stadium for all the new housing developments outside of town. I've never seen that before at a sporting event. But at the game were 3,000 quiet, polite, boring people. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It's been a long time since I've been to a sporting event where I didn't have to worry about any drama. The attire for men in Nebraska is pretty basic. Most men wear t-shirts or a casual collared shirt. Half the men wear ball caps with a sports team on it. All have sneakers on. For the ladies, it's a loose, out-of-fashion blouse, sandals, and jeans. Both wear cheap sunglasses. The bush light tap here has a corn cob on it. <laughs> That's so Nebraska. They sell these vodka smashes at the stadium, and you get smashed, people. Please drive safely after a Storm Chasers game. Oh my god, these are strong. Oh yeah, and I have to say, StubHub sucks. Don't ever use them. Ever. I also ate at a place called Gather, and they had this charcuterie board that was amazing. I wasn't sure about a charcuterie board for dinner, but man, oh man, I inhaled that thing. But the best part was these pork bun dumplings. These were delightful. See people, Nebraska's more than steak and taters. Just wandering around downtown Omaha at night's a breeze. I saw like three homeless people the whole time I was there. There wasn't any yelling, arguing, bottles breaking, fights, drama, sirens. It's just calm here. It could almost put you to sleep. So Jocelyn, before the call, you, you had texted me and you asked me what the title of the video was going to be. Right. And I told you something like, you know, is Omaha the next best place to live in America? Um, did that surprise you? Yes, it surprised me a lot because like I responded back um, when people from out of town asked me about living here. They're like, why do you still live there? <laughs> I'm like, because I like it. It's where I raised my kids. It's where I was raised. It's a good place to be safe. I never feel not safe here. I lived in North Omaha half my life. And that's like considered, well, people would ask me if you've been shot at, <laughs> like, um, no. And I'm not one of those patient drivers. So like I'll honk. Sometimes, you know, I might gesticulate a little bit, but even through that, I've never been shot at. So to spell that rumor, I don't understand it, but it is what it is. It just shows ignorance. Yeah, I, I, North Omaha is nothing compared to the, the worst places I've been to. I've seen terrible places in this country, and I'd heard, oh, North is bad, it's ghetto, it's run down, it's dangerous. And I think there is a lot of crime up there, but I certainly did not feel any danger, nor did it look anything like any bad place I've ever been to. I was like, if this is bad, then y'all have it good. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, like, I like Omaha a lot. Like, I, I know no place is perfect, but I feel like Omaha is in that perfect growth phase right now where, mm -hmm. you know, when things are getting better and there's excitement, but yeah. it's not too big yet where, like, you're seeing right. a lot of the problems that other large cities see. Yeah, well, actually, so I was raised here, as you, as you know, um, so I'm in my 40s and I can tell like the population is at like growing at a rapid speed so I can like when you're on the big interstate system you would only have like traffic backed up if there was an accident or construction and now it's every day so it's like okay well <laughs> here it is so I can just tell even from last year like you know maybe once a week traffic rush up every single day <laughs> so brake lights it's gonna take a while to get home we've i've never dealt with that like my whole life so that's an adjustment that i'm not really liking but i'm not gonna move
So. Yeah, traffic in Nebraska, who'd have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? Not me. So, but, you know, we're the heart of the U.S., the Midwest. I guess we're on um, Silicon Prairie. <laughs> so there's, you know, I, I didn't even know that until just like a couple few weeks ago. So Yeah, there's a bunch of tech jobs coming. Yeah, and, and there's a bunch of people coming. I mean, I saw Sarpy County. All the all the sprawl out there. I saw West Omaha. It kind of seems like um, people might start to get frustrated with all the growth and the and the increase in the home prices and rent. Or no? Yeah, um, in Omaha, we're like ten percent less. Like the co- the housing market, like it's ten percent less than everywhere else in the U.S. on average. And there were no houses for sale. And then when they would go up for sale, they would be sold in a day. And usually for about 25% more than they were asking just because of the demand. Mm -hmm. Never seen anything like that before in my whole life. So I don't know if that's just a sign of things to come. Like, I don't know what that means, but I I do think that we're going to be really close to having a million residents here, like within the next year, probably. Yeah, I think the um, metro area has a million already. I think Omaha proper has like 590,000 or something. Okay. Yeah, well, but yeah, I- it's, it's getting up there. What makes Omaha such a great place in terms of all, all the, the things that I noticed? And I guess what's your feedback on, on the low crime, the friendly people? I feel like uh, people it- are really friendly here. Like they're really super friendly. Um, why? You know, why are Omaha, why are people in Omaha so friendly? I don't. You know, it. if it's any, so the only thing that I have to go by is just me, my childhood, how I was raised. But, you know, we're family people. You know, we don't move far away from our families. Like, as a matter of fact, I the house that I was raised in, like as an adult, I bought it, and my parents bought the house next door. So, but, and then now I'm living in, my grandma passed away. I'm living in her house. You know, so I think just people are just family oriented and when you're like that then you're happy so when you're happy you're not mean to people you have a smile on your face you know but you haven't been here in the winter time have you i i have lived i've been to the midwest in the winter i lived in indiana for five years i know what a midwest winter's like yes yeah so people tend to get crabby in the winter so like summertime everybody's happy (laughs) <laughs> in the winter time everybody's cold and miserable and i guess we're like the fifth coldest big city in the u.s the fifth like we're even up, like below chicago and they're oh. like the windy city but <laughs> we're more windy than they are <laughs> i think that um everybody's so tight-knit here too because everybody kind of relates to everybody else you know like the outsiders that come in i think that they're loud sometimes because we're friendly to them i don't know where they're from but i've heard that you go places east coast and they're not so friendly and welcoming you know um but we we're just happy that people like to come here and we host a lot of cool things like we have the college world series here every year we have the omaha swim trials i mean we have big events here that draw people in and i think that um that i think we just like to, we like other people to see that we're we're up and coming, <laughs> you know. We're, we might be in Nebraska, but I mean we're still cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's like we have all these new upcoming things. Like me and you were talking about where I work on the weekends. You know, like nobody in a million years would have ever thought conservative, you know, Nebraska would allow drinks to leave like a premises and walk somewhere and then go to another premises. And that happened about seven years ago. So, I mean, so I, it's just, I'm happy here. I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really do feel like ne- Nebraskans live in a bubble. Um, you don't have the same, nearly the same problems that most of America has. And I think that's a good thing because you're innocent and you guys <laughs> You're you're not jaded, and and, and I, I guess I'm just curious to know what you think of the rest of the country because you hear about what's going on all over the country with crime, homelessness, yeah, a holes, um, droughts, um, joblessness, yeah. and whatever is right. going on, cost of living, and you guys don't have any of that there. So, do you, how do you feel about us? 
it scares me other places. Like the thought of like somewhere else scares me, but I'll go visit, you know, but I don't, I don't know. Like when I think of um, gangs, like on the West coast, you know, like I watched your video about um, Las Vegas and how a lot of Californians are locate, relocating to Vegas, bringing stuff. That scares me. <laughs> that scares me a lot. We do have our gangs and stuff here. It's not perfect. You know, we have our crime. We have all of our, I mean, we have bad people. There's bad people everywhere, but there's way more good people than bad people. So when you're outnumbered with good, then the bad can't really do much damage. But I feel like if I were to go somewhere else, the way that the media makes everything sound, um, like I'll be dead soon, <laughs> you know, like, cause I don't know anybody. I don't have anybody around to, you know, tell me, don't go here, don't go there. You don't realize how clean your air is that you're breathing every day until you go to like a, a big smog city, you know, where you can't even, it looks so dirty. You can't even see like the bottoms of tall buildings, you know, or anything underneath. It made me so grateful that I didn't live in California, even though when I was young, I wanted to move. I wanted to get out of here as fast as I could. Like I'm yeah. happy that I live in boring old Nebraska, <laughs> flat yeah. Nebraska. Boring, flat Nebraska. Yeah, that's are you. It's not just the wildfires that you don't have there that are a concern. Um, it, you have far less problems in your state than what most states have. And the ironic thing is, most people, a lot of people, don't even know where Nebraska is on a map. They can kind of point to it. Maybe they've never been there. I had never been in Nebraska until the, the day before I arrived in Omaha. Okay. Um, but I left with a appreciation of like I really do think that that part of the country is like the last great honest Aww. place you know it's refreshing place. to hear that from an outside point of view because i mean i i guess it's just something we take for granted and i'm proud of my fellow like omahans for like making you feel like that because like i told you before people when they find out where i'm from they're like why do you live there <laughs> just like why do you ask stupid questions <laughs> so <laughs> but it's just I mean, I'm, it makes me happy that you felt so welcomed. Yeah, are most people thinking about staying in Omaha and in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. or, or, I, I would imagine a while ago, you, people probably couldn't get out of Nebraska fast enough, especially when they graduate high school. They're like, I'm out of here, peace. I'm going to California or Florida or just yeah. anywhere but here. Yeah. Are people starting to not want to leave like they were in the past? You know, the only people that... Um, I associate with that are like, I can't wait to get out of here are, you know, um, soon to be high school graduates. And I was the same. So the people that I know that actually, you know, followed their dreams, moved to Florida, moved to California, wherever they moved, they were back within a year and they just, they missed it. They, but you don't realize until you're not there, what you have, you know, you just take it for granted. I mean, families, it's, what I see more is like in my job, you know, I work for a dentist, so I have all sorts of people come in that I interact with daily. Um, they're, if they're from out of town, it's usually like from work, work related. And we also have office for the Air Force here. So a lot of, we have a lot of outsiders coming in. And then when it comes time for them to either retire or, you know, you can leave, you can move now, you're done, they stay. Like they, they stay at the cost of living, you know, it's easy to get around they don't ever leave and then they, their families are here, you know, like they bring everybody and they can't believe how much property they get for such a fraction of the cost where they would get from their hometown. Like they were glad that they had the experience so then they could appreciate everything that they had growing up. I mean, even when I just go visit, I couldn't imagine living there, living somewhere else like a big city. They, they said they felt swallowed, swallowed up. Like they didn't feel like like they were really even their own person or, you know, so they were an outsider. But I guess that would make sense with what you said about your experience about feeling welcomed here and, and you really were like, you liked the people, you thought they were friendly. It wasn't just the people, it was just the, the community of the city. It's very clean. I didn't feel unsafe. Lots of new exciting things going on. The, the you know the growth the, all the technology it's just it's booming right now it is and it you're is. the park had just opened a week before i got there and everybody mm -hmm. was at yeah park. that was closed for like six years 
That was like yeah. a staple when I was a kid, like, you know, go down those slides. And it was closed for so long and it was just like, you miss it. So I'm glad that you were here when they opened it because they, they just opened it like a month ago, I think. Yeah, and that park in most major cities would be filled with not good people, would, would be really? you know, ruined. Yeah. Really? And it, 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 hopefully, that, that I think that park is like the perfect like metaphor for I think what I'm trying to say with, with, with the video and the experience okay. is it's okay. just now brand new. Hopefully it doesn't get ruined. It was, they have police presence. I mean, it's, they have, I mean, you feel safe. You don't feel like, even if there's a sketchy person here or there, they don't bother you. I've been to um, San Francisco and oh my goodness, I got heckled. Like walking downtown, you get asked, they come up and ask you for money. They're not, they're not shy. That would not fly here, <laughs> you know, like, uh -uh, or and, like the cops would intervene and, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow it because they don't want people to feel unsafe. You know, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with other big cities that, I mean, it's don't, they have any pride in their city. You know, I mean, these are nice downtown buildings, like the nice areas. And then people got to deal with this, <laughs> you know, like, I think I would rather like take a wrong exit than walk downtown in one of those cities where people come up and heckle you. <laughs> yeah, panhandling is not a, a huge concern um, where you are. And then, and that's like the least of your concerns in some of the bad places I've been to. Like if somebody comes up and asks you for money, you're like, thank you for not stabbing me or- My goodness, see like, that, you know, that's me. the stuff of nightmares for me, you know, so yeah. I'll just, stay in my little bubble here in Omaha. I'll go visit, but <laughs> probably not San Francisco anytime soon, unless they cleaned it up. This was a while ago when I was there, as there mm -hmm. for a convention. And it was, it's such a beautiful city. They have such cool stuff, but my oh my, like how easily it can get ruined. And it doesn't have to be that way. They just have to kind of tighten things up, make people feel more safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I publish a video, that says Omaha is the next great city in America, that people in Omaha are going to be happy or worried that, oh God, here comes more people and more attention. You know, we're welcoming and, you know, I, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, traffic, once you get used to the traffic, you know, like getting used to, this is what we have to deal with. After that, that's my issue is the traffic. But anybody can come here as long as they're, a pop, you know, like, don't come here. I, I, w I don't want the influx, like, from, you know, California to Las Vegas with all the gangs, all that. They, that could stay away. But um, if you're just have a good heart and, you know, you are looking to have a good life and a good family life, come on, come on down. But, you know, if, if not, if you're going to be not positive, just stay where you are because you're not going to fit in very well here and you know like we're pretty we're, we are still conservative so you'll know that you know you're not welcome but a good person come on come on in you know just be a contributing member don't bring your your junk with you we don't we don't need all that we, we like to keep our people good people <laughs> so we want people like when you when people travelers come we want them to feel welcomed. So if you're not going to be like that, please don't come. <laughs> don't go to Omaha if you're a jerk. Yeah, stay away, jerks. <laughs> so, jerks, yeah. When I was telling um, my coworkers and friends what I was doing, I, I put a Facebook post up, like asking for like information. Like, what do we talk about? Everybody was all excited. Like, you know, yeah. So I think that, I don't think that people here care about outsiders coming and moving you know i mean it's been happening for a long time already but um i mean i haven't really seen any topics on it like media like what you do you know mm -hmm. but i think that i think that we would all be so proud of if you put out a video that said is omaha the best place you know to be or like one of the best places to be like we'd be proud of it you know so because who would have who would have thunk it <laughs> Who would have thought Omaha would be so great? I mean, um, you've always been great, nationally known great. <laughs> yeah, 
That's okay. <laughs> Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.